My name is Rachel Butala. I am Sophia Mawu. And this is Lydia Olson. And we are going to take this time to talk to you about music therapy and how it can work and help with relaxation. So we'll go over a few aspects of music therapy as a whole, aspects of relaxation, as well as specific examples of interventions that can be used. So as far as music therapy as a whole, because obviously there's a lot more that you can do with music therapy than just relaxation. Um, so with music therapy, you're using music as the medium to achieve non-musical goals. So examples of those could be to increase or maintain positive social interactions, communication skills, things like fine and gross motor movements. Um, you can use all of those in music therapy using music to help you reach those goals. And in order to become a music therapist, you need to go to a university that has an accredited music therapy program, um, complete all your classes, then you need to have a six month internship, and then you sit for the board exam. And then after you pass the board exam, you are qualified as a certified music therapist or an MTBC. What does relaxation really mean? So it has two components, a physiological component and a psychological component. Physiologically, um, which means has to do with like your, your physical body, um, when you're relaxed, your heart rate decreases and your blood pressure decreases. So uh, your blood is able to flow more easily and there's decreased muscle tension. So your muscles are not as tight. Now, psychologically, you can be focused on the moment, you're focused on what you're doing right now, and then you are focused on what is within your control. So a lot of anxiety um, stems from focusing on things that are outside of your control. So with relaxation, we wanna remind people to focus on the things that are within their control. So how then do music and relaxation fit together? Well, there is research on music therapy and how it works with relaxation, and studies have found several correlations. So the ISO principle, which we'll discuss in more detail later, involves starting with high levels of harmonic change and fast tempos, and slowly decreasing complexity and tempo can induce relaxation by matching the client's mood and then bringing down the mood state from there. Music drones can also induce relaxation. Music can enhance progressive muscle relaxation. And listening to live music with a music therapist can reduce stress and induce relaxation. Here is an example of a research study done specifically on vocal improvisation. So improvisation is a technique when you don't have like any sheet music, you don't have a script of what you're supposed to do. You just do kind of whatever you feel in the moment. So vocal improvisation would be singing and you don't have notes that you're singing or a song, you're just kind of improvising however you want it to sound. Um, this study surveyed college students in Nigeria, about 200 of them, and they were federally funded students in Nigeria. And they did kind of a two-part relaxation for um, in their music therapy sessions. They used live and recorded music, and a key to this study was they incorporated different cultures and different languages into their music. The clients were encouraged to lay down um, on mats, but of course they could sit in their chairs and if they wanted, they could leave their eyes open. Um, they were encouraged to have their eyes closed. And then after that, they did some verbal processing and the music therapist asked the clients what, what they got out of it, what they were thinking about, did their mind kind of wander, or were they focused? And then they did a deep breathing exercise. While they were deep breathing, they did the vocal improvisation and this encouraged them using like their voice to hold out notes for a long time and to take deep breaths so that they could hold out notes for a long time and that encouraged them to take the deep breathing and this study showed that the students who did the music therapy group were more relaxed on average than the students who did not and for a complete citation it's in the bibliography one of the research articles that i have looked at that is about music and relaxation is effects of progressive muscle relaxation and music on stress as measured by finger temperature response by Virginia E. Kibler and Mark S. Reiter. This is a study that included 76 subjects who were all college students. The subjects were randomly assigned to three different treatment groups. Every subject's skin temperature was taken 
um, like 10 minutes before the treatment by a skin thermometer. And then treatment was given to each of the groups. Group one received progressive muscle relaxation. Group two received just music. And group three received progressive muscle relaxation and music. Treatment was administered through recorded tapes of progressive muscle relaxation and music to ensure uniformity of treatment methods in the groups. The subject's peripheral skin temperature was taken again after the treatment. There was no significant difference of effect of treatment among the groups. However, the mean gain for the progressive muscle relaxation and music group was higher than the overall means of all the groups combined. Does the music used in relaxation have to be live or could it also be recorded? The answer is both live and recorded music can be used in music therapy for relaxation. Live music allows for adaptations to be made in the moment by the music therapist through observations of the state of the client as well as the reactions to the music. For example, if a client is anxious, a music therapist might start by playing a song that meets their anxious energy level and then slowly adapt the music by slowing down the tempo to hopefully calm down the patient. Live music allows for visual engagement, audible engagement, and physical engagement through the vibrations or the other sensory input the client could experience from playing instruments. Recorded music can be more familiar to clients, or it could also be used for structural purposes. Some clients prefer songs to be authentic to what they're familiar with, while another reason could be that clients could prefer music because of emotional attachment. According to Denise Grock and Tony Wilgrams, they have a book on receptive methods in music therapy that was published in 2007. The voice quality of the music therapist's voice is important for some interventions in order to induce relaxation. Voice tone should be at a middle range that's not too high and not too low. It should also have a warm and comforting tone. It is effective for establishing trust and sense of safety. A high-pitched voice might convey a sense of insecurity or inexperience, and a very low voice might sound too gruff. Voice dynamic is important, especially with kids, in maintaining engagement. Having a lilting intonation helps sustain for spans of time requiring concentration. Keeping a slow pace is also important. It is difficult to relax if a therapist is speaking too fast, as a client has to process the words quickly as they are said. Along with keeping a slow pace, repeating instructions enables clients more time to process the information being said and follow along more easily without feeling anxious. Now that we've had a brief overview of both music therapy and relaxation, as well as how they fit together, we are going to take some time to discuss specific interventions and ways to utilize music therapy to facilitate relaxation. The first type of music and relaxation intervention we would like to share with you is the intervention that allows for moving to music. Stretching and breathing to music is often used to reduce tension in the body. The music therapist can use choice of recorded music that has elements desired for relaxation and allows the music therapist to model the stretching and breathing for clients. While instructing clients on taking deep breaths and stretching, it could be beneficial to give the clients a visual or example of breathing and stretching. Some of the visuals I have used to help clients visualize stretching and breathing are visualizing breathing in the smell of fresh cookies and then breathing out to blow out a candle. I've also used a visual of a turtle pulling his head into his shell to raise shoulders squeezing a lemon to visualize squeezing your hands and having that tense tension in your hands, a cat stretching to visualize stretching out your arms in front of you or above your head, and riding a motorcycle to visualize leaning to one side or the other. Aside from using recorded music, the music therapist could also choose to use live music for movement and relaxation. Musical cues can help to cue the client to stretch and breathe. I will share one example of live music with musical cues in a moment. Some of the musical cues I will use includes a slow strum across the strings of an auto harp to cue deep breath. A slow strum also used to cue someone to stretch out their arms or their legs, 
faster strumming to cue shoulder raises, chord changes to promote transitions between stretches, and a steady accented strumming for marching. Let's take a deep breath in. And out. And in. And out.
Another type of moving or movement to music that you can use is um, stretching with a plucking pattern on the guitar. And this uses, it's kind of digs into the theory of music. Um, so this uses like uh, di dissonance, which is can be an unpleasant sound to help someone kind of associate that with stretching or like squeezing their muscles. And then when it gets to the pleasant sound, you relax. Um, the tonic is usually the the um, the one chord in a song. So that is where like it resolves. So the client can associate that with relaxing. So I'll go ahead and do a demonstration of what I've done with several clients. So with this, the G, as you can see in my example, that's the tonic. When I do a D7, that's when they are encouraged to like stretch or squeeze their muscles. And when I go back to a G, that's when it resolves. That's when you can relax. So here's how I might do it with a client. And squeeze your hands together. And relax. And of course, I would repeat that with different body parts, whatever, uh, you know, however long the client needed it to be. Rachel and I have used yoga within music therapy with many of our clients. As we talked about earlier, relaxation is about both physiological relaxation and psychological relaxation. Yoga focuses on relaxation for the body and mind. While doing yoga, clients are encouraged to focus on positive thoughts. Before doing the actual yoga poses, I ask the clients about things that make them happy. I might encourage them to think about their family, friends, or other people that are important to them, pets, places they enjoy, activities they enjoy, etc. Once the clients have brought to mind the things that make them happy, I prompt them to focus on these things while we do the various yoga poses for the yoga flow. Most clients might struggle to do the traditional yoga poses. I have found adapted yoga poses that can be done seated. We not only want clients to be able to relax while they are in music therapy, but also to learn and find ways to cope when they're outside of music therapy. Having themed yoga makes yoga more enjoyable for clients, but also helps clients remember the yoga poses and th therefore make it possible for them to find relaxation in yoga on their own. Here are some examples of themed yoga poses in a yoga flow. A yoga flow is a set of poses that all go together. All of these can be done within a chair. Obviously, even some of these poses could be a little bit of a struggle, but we can adapt them as need be for clients. Progressive muscle relaxation is a technique used by more professionals than just music therapists. There's a lot of good ways to integrate music with progressive muscle relaxation. So if you haven't heard of it, you do progressive muscle relaxation by tensing and releasing different parts of your body intentionally. So the, when you tense your body, it's intentional. And when you release, it's intentional. And that type of thought and that type of intentionally releasing tension helps you calm the tension down in your body. So there's multiple ways that a music therapist could use music to help. The way that I tend to do it in sessions is with a piano. And I like to do um, five, seven chords. So that's going to be the fifth scale degree. And then you add a seventh. And that sounds something like this. That represents the tension. And when it goes back down to a major chord, that's when you release. So I will do a short demonstration of that. Squeeze your hands. Squeeze your elbows. And squeeze your shoulders. And relax. So that's one way a music therapist might do it. Another way is using a tone bar. If you're not sure what that is, I'll show you a video in just a moment. Um, but it's a large instrument that you can actually put your feet on. It's just a large block. That's an instrument. And 
This is a little bit more concrete because the music therapist will instruct the client to feel vibrations in different parts of their body. So it starts with, with saying to feel the vibrations in your feet, feel it in your legs, feel it in your stomach, etc. Um, and I will show you a short video of that now. So this instrument is the tone bottle. So you can set it up like this. Um, if you're doing it in a, in a group, this might be easier. If you're doing it with an individual session, you can set it on its side. The vibrations are a lot stronger that way. And the client actually puts their feet on the tone bottle. Just like that. And then that way they actually feel, physically feel the vibrations throughout their body. So here's an abridged version of how I might do this with a client. maybe attention span or how much time the session has left. Um, you could do different body parts. Sometimes I do like feel it in your shoulders, elbows, your hands, and your fingertips. And sometimes I'll do like feel it in your neck, feel it in your head, feel it in your ears. Um, but that all depends on the client. Another relaxation technique that I've used quite a few times is um, using affirmations. So affirmations, of course, can be used in a lot of settings. They don't have to be musical, um, but there's a lot of good ways to incorporate them into music. So what I like to do is I have the client name a few affirmations that they've used in the past or ones that go along with a goal that they're working towards. Um, for example, if they're working towards coping with pain or coping with an illness, they could have affirmations about being healthy and being content. Um, if they're working towards forgiveness, they might have affirmations relating to that. Um, anything that they're working towards, they could come up with affirmations focused on that. So there's different ways to do it. Um, the way that I like to do it is actually a lyric rewrite. So I'll put, I'll have them put the affirmation into a song that's naturally relaxing. And I can sing that and play it with them a few times to help them remember it and to help it really sink in. Um, I'll show you an example of one that I put together um, for a client working towards forgiveness. And I used um, the melody and the chords of the song, We Shall Overcome, as sung by Pete Seeger. And then I put the client's affirmations into this. Mm -hmm. 
real session, I might do that a few times or I might work on, you know, a verse and a chorus and repeat that twice. Now, grounding is a very useful tool that a lot of clinicians use. For music, you can use, you can incorporate grounding into lots of different ways. Um, one way that is really helpful in relaxation is using chants. So a chant is basically something that has a simple melody or a simple rhythm and it's repetitive. It's usually something that people can remember easily. Um, and if you say it a few times in a row, it can help the client visualize. You know, if, they've, if they've received the message a few times, it can just kind of help them internalize it. Um, they are often repetitive. You often will say the, the same thing a few times. They sometimes can involve movement. They don't have to, but that's something that can help with grounding. For example, if the chant says, plant your feet flat on the floor and if the clients do that during the chant that can help them with grounding um, since they're repetitive you can easily remember them under stress um, and then chants can be catered towards a client's individual goal so the chant that i'm going to show you today is if someone is working towards passing a test if they're working on ways to reduce anxiety on the day of the test so I wrote this chant um, for that in mind. The style that I'm going to be doing is when you start out saying the chant multiple times and you gradually drop out words and then you leave the most important words at the end. And that's what the client is supposed to take with them as they go to take the test or whatever the case may be. So here is the chant that I wrote for passing a test. I am enough to pass this test. I am enough to pass this test. I am enough pass this test. I am enough to pass this test. I am enough pass. I am enough. I am enough. I am enough. As previously mentioned, music can be beneficial because of the emotional attachment people have to specific songs. Clients could have an emotional attachment to a song that helps them relax. It is good to know that what one person finds relaxing might be completely different for another person. Therefore, it is important to find our clients' preferences in music in order to know what music will be most beneficial for them. One way that client-preferred music is used for relaxation is to work with the client to make a relaxation playlist of the songs they find relaxing. It can also be beneficial to play a live song for them that is relaxing. Here is an example of a client-preferred song, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, that I recently played for a client.
The ISO principle is something that music therapists use all the time. So the ISO principle means when you start out with musical elements that meet the client where they're at. So for example, if a client is experiencing a lot of anxiety, the music therapist might use the ISO principle by playing a song that has a high uh, tempo, so it's fast, and it might have somewhat complex rhythm. So that might match the mood of the client's anxiety. And then by matching the mood, the music therapist is able to manipulate the music. So they would be able to slow the tempo down or maybe make the rhythm less complex. And then because the client identified with the music at the beginning, the, the music is able to help them move from a state of anxiety to a state of being more calm. It works the opposite way too. If a client has very low arousal levels, let's say maybe they're falling asleep in a session, the therapist can start out by playing something very slow and something very, uh, the, the melody maybe is very simple, and then the client would identify with that. And then the therapist can use those elements, maybe by speeding it up, maybe making the melody a little bit more complex, adding more jumps, and then the client then would go along with that. So. Another way that you can use ISO principle in relaxation is continuous music. So this is something I've done before and I found it to be helpful. So you chain a few songs together and you don't use the whole song. You maybe use a verse and a chorus or two verses, um, however you wanna do it. And each song sample gradually gets slower or the strumming pattern maybe gets simpler, the melody maybe gets slower and the idea with this is that the first song is, you know, upbeat and fast. And if the client is anxious, they kind of connect to this. And then you gradually slow, slow it down. I will show you a video demonstration of this. The, the way I put it together for this demonstration is not necessarily the way I did it in a session. The way I did it in a session, it was much longer, but I chose kind of the most important transitions and the most important verses uh, for the purposes of this demonstration. Every path I make, the road leads back to 
The place I know where I cannot go, what is wrong with me? Do you find certain sounds relaxing? Not necessarily pieces of music, but more ambient noises. A lot of people find the sounds of rain or flowing water, for example, to be very calming. Soundscapes are an excellent exercise, especially for a group that utilize this concept. So in a soundscape, you would pass different sounds using body percussion, which is all the noises you can make with your body, like snapping, or padding, all the noises you make that are not with your mouth, you would pass sounds using body percussion around the group that would evoke the same feeling as the calming sound. So for example, if your group all discussed and agreed that the calming sound that they want to focus on is the sound of rain, there are a few types of body percussion that they might pass around the circle to evoke that sound. So the first would be rubbing your hands together, to evoke the sound of wind, snapping, or patting your lap, to evoke the sound of raindrops falling, either lightly or heavily, and stomping, especially if you stomp quickly, can evoke the sound of thunder. So you can start small with just the wind, build all the way up until you have a whole thunderstorm, and then slowly bring it back down. So while soundscapes are a tool to help relaxation primarily within the session room, lyric analysis can be a great tool to transfer coping skills to promote relaxation out of the session room. So we can discuss both emotions and coping skills through lyric analysis. Planning questions ahead of time can really streamline this discussion to be as productive as possible. Learning to identify our emotions and learning what coping skills we can do to calm our emotions when they get a little bit out of our control is a critical skill to have both in and outside of the session. So an example of a possible lyric analysis discussion would be taking the song Landslide by Fleetwood Mac. So we could start with a very concrete idea, asking the client what is a landslide. And we can talk about, well, it's when mud is coming down a hill or a mountain and it's bringing down trees and houses and cars and everything comes down with it. So we can move on once we've solidified the concept of a literal physical landslide to ask, do you think that in the song, Stevie Nicks is talking about a literal landslide with mud and trees? Or do you think that the landslide might stand for something else. And that can bring us to the topic of an emotional landslide, what feels like a landslide, but inside our hearts and our minds. And we can discuss what for the client an emotional landslide might look like. And that's gonna vary from person to person. Some people are going to be really bothered by things that others don't even notice. So we can talk with the client about what their personal emotional landslide would look like and finally, we can discuss what the client can do when they are experiencing that emotional landslide. Can ask them what are some things they already do that they know calm them down. And we can also discuss things that they might not have thought of, but that will be easy for them to do outside of the session room and will help calm them down. And what's most crucial about this is that the coping skills we discuss 
are things that the client can do on their own without the help of the music therapist. Another great way to learn about coping skills that we can use outside of the session room, especially for clients who have difficulty paying attention to just being talked at or asked questions over and over again, is to play games that are focused around coping skills or relaxation or emotional identification. So one example of a game is coping skills hot potato. So there's a visual, the URL for which is included in this slide, that has a series of questions based on die rolls. For this game, the clients would pass around the die just like you pass around a ball and regular hot potato. When the music stops, whoever is holding the die would roll it, and then the music therapist would help them check the visual to find the corresponding set of questions and ask the client a question from that set. So some examples are hypothetical scenarios that ask what you would do or coping skills that you already have. There are all kinds of questions like that that you can see and I will also include the visual in the next slide. So this is the visual to go along with our coping skills hot potato game. So as you can see, each number, instead of being one question, is a different type of question. And that allows for the game to last a little longer and dig a little bit deeper. So we have the top three category with things such as top three ways to feel calm. The complete it category where a sentence is begun and the client is asked to finish it. The true or false category the category with hypothetical scenarios, asking the client, what would you do? Um, there's the risk category, which is kind of like coping skills themed dares, which can be really fun. And number six is another version of the hypothetical scenario concept. The final relaxation and music technique we wish to discuss with you is guided imagery. This is not to be confused with GIM or guided imagery in music, which is a separate type of music therapy that requires additional training and certification. However, any music therapist is capable of adding music to an existing visualization script. These scripts are used outside of music therapy, but music can really enhance this experience. Imagery scripts are a great way to relax for clients who thrive with concrete concepts in particular. Having something to visualize specifically can be really great for a client to hold on to. Relaxing music or relevant nature sounds can enhance the benefits of this imagery. Many music therapists use nature sounds or pre-recorded music. I like to use live music because I can use some of the techniques that were discussed earlier to help guide breathing while speaking the script. So here is one example visualization script with music. Get comfortable, sit on a supportive chair or lie on your back. Now relax your body by releasing any areas of tension. Allow your arms to go limp. Now your legs. You can feel your limbs becoming loose and relaxed. Now relax your neck and back by relaxing your spine. Release the hold of your muscles all the way from your head down your neck and your back. Breathe deeply in and out. One more time, in and out. Oh, imagine 
are walking toward the ocean, walking through a beautiful tropical forest. You can keep taking those deep breaths in and out while you picture this. You can hear the waves up ahead. You can smell the ocean spray. The air is moist and warm and you feel a pleasant, cool breeze flowing through the trees. You walk along a path and come closer to the sea. As you come to the edge of the trees, you see the brilliant blue of the ocean ahead of you. You walk out of the forest and onto a long stretch of white sand. And the sand is very soft. Imagine taking off your shoes and walking through the hot sand toward the water. You can hear the waves crashing to the shore and smell the salt water and the sand. You can see the waves washing up onto the sand and back into the ocean. And this can mirror your breaths. You can breathe in as you picture the waves washing up onto the sand and out as you picture them moving back toward the ocean. As you approach the water, you can feel the mist on your skin. And the waves begin to wash over your feet. You can feel the cool water provide relief from the hot sand. If you walk further, if you wish, you can swim if you want to. Now, Take some deep breaths and wake up and open your eyes as you are ready. If you would like to know anything more about anything that we discussed today, here are a few of the sources that we used to put together this presentation. One is the chapter voice quality of the music therapist in the book receptive methods in music therapy we also have an article from the journal of clinical psychology an article from medicine and if you want to find more themed yoga visuals like the ones shown in the presentation you can visit kidsyogastories.com we hope that you found this presentation informative we thank you for your time and we wish you a wonderful rest of your day.